This James Harden 76ers situation has become an exhausting. You are locked on 76ers, your daily Philadelphia 76ers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on NBA to enter the promo code locked on NBA for a free white tech hat with any purchase. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. Look, y'all, I'm going to be real. You know, maybe it's because I've been covering the 76ers for. 10 seasons. This upcoming season will be my 11. But I'm getting tired of this James Harden situation. I mean, I get it. I know that, you know, as a beat writer, you have to cover it, right? You have to cover the beat. You have to get all the stories. You got to do all that. But this thing is just getting crazy. So many twists and turns. You know, before we had the podcast, you know, James, I mean, before I get before this weekend was over, the last updated last update was that you know James said what he said about Daryl, um, calling him a liar, the whole nine. And then James, you know, was on on Friday was in Houston. He did that in China, called him a liar in China on Merlin, on on Monday. He was in Houston in, on uh, Friday and said that he doubted that this thing could be repaired. Right, the relationship. So then next thing you know, word breaks on Saturday that the NBA is doing an inquiry about James, about what James said. Well, when they spoke to James, James said that the reason why he called Daryl a liar was because that, um, you know, Daryl said that he would make he would be traded quickly. Now, a lot of people assumed that when James said he was a liar initially, that he was talking assuming that there was some an under the table that that was worked out beforehand. Now, the Sixers came out and said that wasn't true. You know, this and that, they, they never agreed upon anything. But this is a bunch of drama, a bunch of drama that hasn't gotten us anywhere, right? The thing is, we knew when James opted in that he was going to be a Sixer. We knew that he wanted to be traded. And since then, it's been a lot of, he doesn't want to be here. He doesn't want to do this. He doesn't want to do that. The Sixers are trying to trade him, but they're only willing to trade him if they get the right uh, price or right offers. You know, they want to get some, you know, they want to get quality players, but they also want to get um, picks that they can turn into assets to get a, a player. Now, the deal is, they said that from the beginning. That's been out there from the beginning. But it keeps getting rehashed, you know. But there's nothing new. It's just the same stuff that's being talked about over and over and over again, right? And then you look at it, and where are we? I mean, there was only one team. Like, initially, there was reports that saying, it was the Cleve, no, it was the uh, Los Angeles Clippers and the New York Knicks. Well, the Knicks was like, nah, we don't want James. Why would we take James, right? There's not a market for him. So what happens? The Sixers say, we're not going to trade James. James gets upset. But to be honest with you, that only got us where we are. I mean, from the beginning. So all this rhetoric didn't really amount to a hill of beans. Now, again, it's great for selling newspapers. It's great for getting clicks on the website, right? I mean, it's great for people tuning in the TV, all this and that. But the moment that James opted in, the moment he opted in, based off of how this Ben Simmons situation was two years ago when Daryl tried to trade him or James didn't want to come back, you knew this thing was going to take a while. You knew it was going to take at least the summer. 
right? Or, you know, you just knew it. Now, first of all, when a player comes out and says there's only a certain team that they want to play for, you're in for a long haul. Because no other team in their right mind is going to give you something. Or in that team isn't going to give you what you want. Because why should the Los Angeles Clippers give the Sixers what they want? If that's the only place he wants to be at. It's kind of like, why are we overbidding ourselves? You know, it's kind of like saying, I'm overpaying for something. That I could get on the clearance rack. So I'm going to pay a new price, top the line price for something that you're going to get on the clearance rack. It doesn't make any sense, right? So that's the that's where we are. And the more that you see it, like, okay, this past weekend, I went on vacation. I was like, look, I got to get away. Get away. Clear my head for a couple of days. Be Why? Because I knew nothing was going to happen. Now, again, like I said, the, the storylines come out. People, Twitter uh, or X, now it's called X. Formerly Twitter is going crazy. Instagram's going crazy. Facebook's going crazy. A lot of things. And I just think that it's time. I think the longer though that this thing lasts is that we'll probably see some repercussion. You know? Now, some people say the best thing for James to do is to stay in Philly. Right? I don't know if that's going to happen. I don't. I think that there's been so much said and so much talked about um, on on his side to whereas it becomes a pride thing now, right? But like I said, this is soap opera is never ending. It really is never ending. But as I was saying before, we're, oh, I don't know what we got out of this. I mean, right now, I don't think anything is really going to happen until the Dame Lillard thing is settled. And Dame's another guy. Much respect for Dame, but I think that really messed him up in a way was coming out, people coming out publicly saying Miami or bus. Miami's like, well, we ain't got to give up much. And the stuff that Miami was willing to give up, the good assets, Portland didn't want. So I feel like we got to wait to see what happens there before we understand or we have a better understanding of what's going to, what the Sixers are going to do or what they can do. Right. But James, it, it so people, James isn't the priority in the league. The priority is dang. That's the priority right now is dang. You know? And once once that gets settled, maybe we can see a resolution to the, the Harden situation. But at the same time, they're both on different things now. Are both of them are both of them like Hall of Famers? Are both of them going to do this? Yes. Does does uh, does James Harden have a, a better resume? Then, um, then Dame, of course he does. MVP, three-time scoring champion. But he's older than him. Dame is in his prime. James is on the twilight of his career. So that's why Dame is a top of the food chain. And once we see what Dame does then all of a sudden the dominoes will fall, so to speak, right? But I want to talk to y'all right now about Bird Dog, right? You know, I'm a fan of Bird Dog, you know, because no, I like Bird Dog because Bird Dog makes you look good, right? A Bird Dog stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thighs and legs, giving you a truly sculpted look, right? So... You know, Bird Dog has purchased a couple of them, khaki shorts. Uh, I wish I had them on me right now, like they're upstairs. 
and I could show you them, you would really fall in love with them the way I fell in love with them. You know, my co-host, Divine Givens, you know, is always talking about them. So I said, look, I got to go out there and buy some. I have to go out there and buy some. And I'm telling you, I've never, never been dissatisfied with anything I have with Bird Dog. And what you need to do is go to birddogs.com, locked on NBA, or enter the promo code locked on NBA for a free white tech hat. That's birddog.com slash locked on NBA or promo code locked on NBA for a free white tech cat. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. I'm telling you, we promise you. Now, the thing about James, right? And the thing about, um, you know, we talked about the best thing that could happen to him. You know, it's weird because when you talk to people, they say James is best bet. Now, this is James still wants to get paid. Now, apparently he does. Right. But he made a lot of money. But apparently his best bet would be the comeback to the Sixers. Be a happy camper. And, you know, show your worth. And then the Sixers, be, the Sixers could offer you more money than any other team. The thing is, I, I think we may have went beyond that point. Now, you never say never. Never. I've seen things where, you know, guys negotiate. Negotiations are rough. They're tough. They're this and that. Things are said. And then at the end of the day, they dap each other up. And they're the best of friends again. And, you know, the liar comment, the way it just seems like James softened the blow when he was interviewed by the NBA. So that changes a little bit of dynamic, right? That could open the door a little bit for something, having a conversation. But I kind of think that we may be beyond that point kind of like what james said he thinks that they are behind that point of repairing stuff because i feel like it got a little personal and what i mean by personal is him and daryl morey had such a great relationship right daryl morey was you can argue enabler for james he, he allowed james to do whatever he wanted to do right he was one of his biggest supporters. I mean, heck, he compared him, said he was better than Michael Jordan in, in, in regards to scoring a ball, right? So when James said what he said, even though he's trying to soften the blow or whatever, if that's what he meant, or however, about talking about he was going to trade him quick, fast, and hurry, it leads you to believe that this thing could be ugly. It leads you to believe that he definitely wants out. It's not about staying here long term and getting paid. And and first of all, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, I think that James is more better suited as a facilitator. I mean, let's face it. He averaged 10.7 assists, 4.8 of them, around 4.8 of them went to Joel Embiid, which helped enable Joel Embiid to get the MVP. Their offense was those two guys. As Doc Rivers said, it's not a democracy. And it sure as heck wasn't a democracy this season. But the problem we have now is James wants to be wanted basketball freedom. So with him getting basketball freedom, you don't want to be just giving the ball to Joel. You want to be able to create you want to be able to do things you want to be able to score you want to be the guy so why would you opt in or why would you try to resign with the sixers now again you can ball out this season and then it may be some teams that say hey we want to get you in free agency but i don't think him coming back after that is a good option i don't you know, I, I just don't. I don't think James coming back is a good option for him. 
You know, I just don't. I'm back to third segment. Nor do I think that the people in Philadelphia want James to come back. Before last segment, I talked about I don't think it's a good option for um, him to come back. I mean, financially it is, but I don't know if how he feels about it. Now, the thing about James is I feel like, you know, the one thing we know about our city is that this city of Philadelphia is a blue collar working class city, right? Sometimes I understand where James is coming from. I do. I see where he gave up $15 million and did this and that. And I can see where he feels like Daryl Morey lied to him and he kind of feels a little betrayed. I can see that. Right. But at the end of the day, this is a blue collar city. People and people, you got certain people living below the poverty level, poverty line, right? People struggling. You got people working two jobs, three jobs. But I was away this weekend and the doorman at the hotel, <laughs> I saw him. I mean, it looked like he was there. Like I, 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 I get up in the morning, I go downstairs, get some breakfast. He's at the door. Then all of a sudden I leave or, you know, I go back down around two o'clock at the door. Then I don't see him anymore, right? Get up early the next morning. I go down for breakfast, six o'clock, see him there. This day I check out of the hotel, a late checkout, checked out one o'clock. He was at the door. And I said, man, you work a lot of hours. You, you're here all the time huh, in the morning. And he says, yeah, this is just my first job, like your first job. He said, yeah, I leave here. And I go straight to my second job and I do this. Been This is my third straight day doubling up like that. So, <laughs> excuse me. So this is more of people, some people's reality than a guy making thirty five point six million dollars <throat> and being unhappy with his job or the team he's playing for. So with that being said, me going about a, a long way. You're not going to find people who feel sorry for you. Sorry. You're just not. Not here, not in Philly. Now, I understand because I see, you know, athletes. But bless me, believe. 35.6 million, you're not going to get people arguing or, 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 or what you call it or, or feeling sorry for you in Philly. Not only that, people in Philly are looking at it like, bruh, you would have gotten paid if you would have showed up in games five and six, no, six and seven, you would have gotten paid. And they feel like he didn't. They look at him and they say, you know, they say James choked for the second year in a row. So with that being said, like, I don't even know what it would be like for him to come back. I just don't. And I know that we say, Time heals all wounds. True. But they're looking at him as if somebody who was ungrateful, somebody who struggled and opted in to take money. If he really wanted to leave, he would have left. Now, I understand why he opted in, because he wouldn't have picked up that money in the market. I get it. I get it. But what they're saying is, fans feel like is, look, bruh, if you want to leave, leave. No one put a gun to your head and say, you got to take these 35.6 million to play for the Sixers. Right? Now, it helped the Sixers out. It did. It helped him out, too, because he wasn't going to get that money problem. So, I feel like there's a lot of people who think he's ungrateful. There's a lot of people who may think that he's a little delusional in Philly because of the way that he ended the season. So I don't know if the fan base, I mean, I'm not saying it's like how it was with Ben Simmons, but the more that I talk to people, the more that I realize that they don't want him to come back. Now, again, Time heals all wounds. However, 
this might be one of those scenarios that it's just best for him to go elsewhere. It really is. It really is. And But you never know. I mean, again, that's why they play the games, right? That's why they do this. That's why they do that. But <clears throat> I'm here to tell you, this has been a summer, a wasted summer, a summer full of drama, unwanted drama, really. And I don't expect it to end anytime soon. I just don't. I mean, what can James do? You know, what can he do? I don't expect it to end anytime soon. But look, y'all, I want to thank y'all for listening. I want y'all to uh, have, a, have a blessed and great day. And, um, you know, you can get this podcast wherever you get your podcast at. It's free and available. You could go to the YouTube channel, Locked On 76ers. When you go to that channel, make sure you click on the Liberty Bell, right? You click on the Liberty Bell, you become a new subscriber, right? And you get notifications whenever, you know, there's a new podcast that pops up. So, you know, do that today, right? And I'll be back tomorrow to chat with y'all. Peace.